Hi guys, Steve back from Midwest Corporate Air. Today, I wanna to talk to you a little bit about fundamentals of instruction, specifically communication side of fundamentals of instruction. The FAA has always gave us a model where they work with that says, we as the CFI, we're the source. The CFI is the source and of course, we provide a symbol and as we provide a symbol, we provide that to the receiver. So the FA's model, it looks, FA's model looks something like this. We're the source, the CFI. We, of course, provide a symbol. And we provide that symbol to the receiver, which is our student, our client, our applicant, however we want to, to look at that process. Now, Let's build on that a little bit and let's connect it with what we actually do every day as a CFI. So to start off with, we have to help, we have to help a student perceive. And perception, perception as we know from reading the FAA's um, instructor handbook, perception is all about our ability to use our five senses to get things into our brain. Perception is about the five senses of sight, hearing, touch, smell, and taste to gather that information as a human and get that information into our brain. And as we, as we sense things around us, we have quickly realized that most of what we perceive through our senses comes into our brain through our sight. Sight provides 75% of our overall perception. And of course, hearing is around 13%. Now, the FAA also tells us that 6% comes from touch or feel, the kinesthetic sense. 3% maybe from smell and 3% from taste. I'm not sure how that works in an airplane, but we can understand quickly that about 88% of what we perceive comes to us through sight and, and sound, hearing. So when we perceive things on the ground in oral instruction, we're looking at things like drawings. Maybe our instructor's helping us with videos. Or maybe it's FAA books or just other instructional books. We've got great, great product out there with things like Jeppesen and, and uh, we also got Gleam or Glime. We've got a lot of stuff from King Schools, just all sorts of good products out there. We've also got flight simulators. We've got the airplane itself or the airplane hooked up to a ground power cart. So as a CFI, if we use symbols or tools that work for people, for them to perceive things, then we can get information into their mind. But our responsibility, according to the FAA, is to really help them gain insight. Now, let's take a look at the difference here. So if I'm out there with somebody and I'm teaching them to fly and I, I go out there and I, I fly at a cruise speed and, and I let them see the flight controls, and they move the flight controls left, right, up, down. They get a fairly quick sense of they don't have to pull uh, or push very hard at all to get action. But if we slow that plane way down to we're just above the stall, they, uh, they can understand that they have to move it a lot more because there's less air pressure. But they may not see that quickly. So our job as flight instructors is to help them perceive that. And once we help them perceive that, we can rapidly increase the insight process. So we help them perceive things. We try to put meaning to that. Uh, the FA tells us the insight is basically when we take perception and uh, put it into its meaningful holes, we gain insight. And that's when a student, our customer, gets that aha moment. So it's fun when you're teaching somebody and, and they didn't understand maybe how induced drag worked or maybe they didn't understand what was exactly going on with when they were uh, doing that slow flight and, and they, it, they get it, it clicks. And we, we use the terminology oftentimes that they've, they've had an aha moment. 
that aha moment when they put all that uh, together is, is when they've gained insight on that. As a good flight instructor, we've learned to do all these things to help them perceive, to, to help them gain insight and help them create that aha moment. But oftentimes we, we can be our own worst enemies. I'm, I'm no different than anybody else. I, I can easily do that same thing. So to be a really good flight instructor, um, there's an acronym we use called Mr. Hemp's. It may or may not work for you, but I'm going to transfer it to you. It's a way of thinking about this. Mr. Hemp's, you can think of Mr. Hemp's as being the best high school or college teacher we ever had. We've all had that best teacher. We just loved her or him. They were just outstanding what they did. We've also probably all had that really lousy one that we wouldn't want to go back to for anything, but we had to. So oftentimes, Mr. and Mrs. Hemp's distinguishes themselves with things like they are very good at helping students learn. That's the H in hemp. They help students learn. And they're really good at helping us emphasize the positive. We want to be that Mr. Hemp's. Help students learn, emphasize the positive. We want to help them minimize the negative. And of course, we need to provide adequate instruction. And that can sound like an like an odd word to use, but the FA, what they mean by adequate instruction is if it's a fast learner, we have to step it up to meet that learner's needs. And if there's someone that's a slower learner, like I was at times in my flight training, we have to be able to pull it back down so they can get it in bite-sized chunks. And then we've got to make sure we do it in a safe manner and we've got to make sure we're really working the standards so that so that we're developing a standard across the board. So Mr. Hemp's, Mr. Hemp's is that person that helps students learn, emphasizes the positive, minimizes the negative, and and provides the training in a safe and standardized environment. What we want to make sure we, we do as well is there's two things that FA acronyms or mnemonic memory aids that I think really help us out. One of them is SPAM, and I use the SPAM with two Ts. It, it helps me. SPAM is all about our capability as an instructor. To be capable, we have to have the SPAM. We, we have to have subject matter expertise. If we don't know if we don't know the subject matter, we're not ready to teach it. So we have to have subject matter expertise, and we have to be able to present it to people in a good presentation. But if we can't put it together with a good personality, people don't want anything to do with us. We all know that. If we have a bad demeanor, if we're somebody that's just you know, just a grumpy old person and we don't do a good job coming across to people or we act like they think they sh that they should already know this. The personality can sink the whole ship. So obviously we need subject matter expertise. We need to have a personality that goes along with it, both in the ground and as well as in the airplane. We, we clearly need to have a good method of presenting it. And it doesn't have to be um, it doesn't have to be some high dollar method. It's, it's about getting it laid out and organizing it first and then being able to present it. Um, we have to be able to assess and we're not judging a person. We're assessing their, their capability or where they're at against where we, they were maybe the lesson prior or we're, we're doing it maybe against the standard. We don't want to start off with the standard right away, but we gradually move towards that ACS standard and we get them to where we're grading against the standard to help them understand kind of a gap analysis. Hey, the standard requires this here, but we're kind of here on this maneuver and we got to get it up and here's what we need to be able to do. And we got to be able to assess it from lesson to lesson, of course. And then we've got to be able to manage that process. You know, what is it I can do to help this person out? So spam, subject matter expertise, you've got to be able to have a, a personality. You've got to be able to present it. You got to be able to do it with, uh, you got to be able to assess them against lesson to lesson, maybe where they even were a month ago to today and where they are today to the standard. But again, the standard doesn't come in right away. And then we've got to be able to manage that process. Remember, there's pretty much four things we're always going to manage. It's, it's us as the instructor. 
making sure we have the student lined up with us at the right time, that we have an airplane. And of course, we're always doing the dance around the weather and the environments. Those things we have to navigate constantly. That's the capability part of, of the instructor. But the instructor also has to have the character. If we're somebody that doesn't have the right character, we're not going to have the business out there. So let's start off with we have to be sincere. We, if you're going to teach, if we're going to teach people, then we've got to be all in to help them out. There's got to be a sincerity from us, and we've got to be accepting of people. People are going to be different than us, and um, that's a good thing. We all, all want to be the same. Uh, so obviously, we've got to be accepting of people. And again, I mentioned it earlier, we have to have proper demeanor. Nobody wants to be around somebody that's a complainer or somebody that's coming at them or somebody that should just just maybe find a different job. So demeanor is important. Professionalism, you got to watch what we say, how we say it. Appearance should be, you know, just the basic things. And of course, we need to be timely. So the sad Pat, some people go with just sad Paul. Sad Pat brings in the element of time. So as an instructor, we have to have the capability, the character, which is the spam and the sad Paul. We need to try to emulate the, the Mr. Hemp's. Um, and, and, and then let's kind of put it all together with the fact that we need to be able to connect with people. If we don't connect with people, we're not going to have people to, to, to teach. I mean, the reality of it is I don't care what it is, whether it's your doctor, your pharmacist, your flight instructor, whatever it is, people do business with people that they like and they respect. If they don't like you, you might have the best subject matter expertise in the world. But if your student doesn't like you, if you're not a likable person, then they're not going to do business with you. And the respect is going to come also that you, that not only you're a nice person, a decent person to deal with with a good demeanor, but you have that subject matter expertise. You have the spam and sad pat. The two of those together causes people to trust you. Ultimately, you, me, we have to connect with people. If we connect with people, if they like us and respect us, we will have more business than we can ever handle. So that's really critical that we connect with people. Like, respect equals trust. Now, what are some of the barriers to communication the FAA tells us we need to make sure we, we are aware of? Well, the barriers to communication, we're going to go into that right here. The barriers to communication are such things as confusion. We're, go we're going to go with COIL. I think you probably all know this, C-O-I-L-E, all right? Confusion. It's confusion between the symbol Confusion between the symbol and the symbolized object. If I put a drawing up and nobody knows what my drawing is, or the drawing is so bad that they can't even focus on it, that's going to create a lot of confusion. If I'm drawing something, I need to be practicing it a little bit at a time. We, we, we certainly don't expect anyone to be an artist out there, but probably 20, 25 drawings or less will get you through what it takes to be a CFI. And if you have that in your CFI book, your binder of things to support your lesson plans, and you you have induced drag drawn out and how parasite drag happens and how the form portion of parasite drag happens, and you can show that to people, that'll go a long, long ways. But if you're gonna sit down and draw everything out in front of them when, when you're there, you're kind of wasting their time wasting your time and they're paying to watch you draw and they're not learning and they're not going to be happy about that. Have that binder ready. Have that have that thing done so well that there's no confusion between what you are presenting as a symbol and what they are trying to learn as that symbolized object, okay? The second thing, of course, it would be overuse of abstractions. Some examples of that um, might be um, flying an instrument approach with someone where they, they call it the FAF. Well, I guess they mean the final approach fix, but the student may not understand that the FAF is the final approach fix. One time I was doing a, uh, uh, getting my multi-engine seaplane and the guy used an example and said, once you get past the, I'm trying to remember what it was, I didn't even know what he meant. 
And uh, so I had to ask him, what, what do you mean by that? So that's, that's what we're talking about with overuse of abstractions. Interference, of course, is just that. Cell phones, people walking in when we're doing a lesson. Or um, one of the things that's hard to learn when you're, when you're teaching somebody an airplane is the, the constant chatter on the radio that interferes with us as we try to teach. It's a reality, but we have to try to work around it. Lack of common experience. I might use a term. Uh, I might use a, use a term regarding a, a piece or component on an airplane, like an actuator, thinking the person might know exactly what an actuator is. Well, the person who's a uh, a power equipment operator might know what the actuator is, where the the guy or gal that's a nurse may not understand. So I have to be careful about my my terms, and and it, a lot of times that revolves around common experience. And then, of course, external factors can come into view as well. We all have things going on in our life. We never know. We never know what that person we greet on the street and say hello to or the person that we work with every day or the person we teach. We don't know what's going on in their life. So a lot of times there's external factors that complicate uh, complicate situations. So one last thing. We talked about Mr. Hemp's, but one of the things that uh, – that the FAA tells us is that Mr. Hemp, so that flight instructor, one of the ways he or she helps students learn is they need to be pleasurable, they need to be interesting, and they need to be enjoyable. Again, it goes back to character and capability of the flight instructor. Nobody likes to be around grumpy people. Nobody likes to be around people with bad demeanors. And uh, we need to make sure we keep learning pleasurable, interesting, and enjoyable. Hey, I hope this communication video helps. I'm going to do more videos on FOIs and keep them coming your way. Have a great day, and thanks for watching. Hey, guys, thanks a lot for watching our videos. If you like what you see and it helps you out, by all means, please give us a like. Subscribe to our channel. And uh, if you're interested in flying with Midwest Corporate Air, uh, just take a look at our website. The information we need is on there. And uh, we hope to see you in the future. Thank you.